Well, tonight we're coming to you live from just outside the Capitol building. You can see in the background, in just 24 hours, President Trump will give his first address to a joint session of Congress. The president has pledged to speed up the deportation of illegal immigrants, and that's provoking fury from congressional Democrats. As a show of resistance, tomorrow several of them will be inviting illegal immigrants to attend the speech. One of those congressmen planning to rebuke the president in this manner is Jared Polis. He's a Democrat from Colorado. Congressman Polis joins us tonight. Congressman, thanks for coming on. Tucker, thanks for having me on. I like to think, uh, educate the president rather than rebuke him about this important topic. Well, it's a little weird um, that you as a lawmaker are flouting federal law by having someone who's breaking it in the chamber where laws are made. I mean, if Republicans showed up with people who violated federal gun laws or tax evaders, you would say, come on. I mean, that, that undermines the rule of law itself, doesn't it? Well, Oscar, like three quarters of a million uh, people, has a deferred action or DACA card, uh, which is a program right. that President Obama put in place. So he can work legally today. He can fly. Uh, he can, you know, was able to get here, obviously, and show his ID. Uh, what we're worried about is President Trump could cancel that program, which would actually create three quarters of a million more uh, people here illegally, and they wouldn't be able to go to work legally the next day. People like Oscar and so many others like him. Well, but I mean, look, it's, it's illegal. The president, the previous president, decided somehow through magic that it's not illegal. But if you think these people ought to be here legally, why don't you change the law? You're a member of Congress. Isn't that how our laws are supposed to be made by members of Congress? Well, I think, look, hopefully you and I agree that the optimal place to deal with it is Congress. We had a bipartisan yeah. immigration bill that saved, uh, reduced the deficit by $200 billion. It would have actually provided a pathway to citizenship for Oscar. That's something he doesn't have today. But the best we have now is permission for him to to go to work through deferred action, which so far President Trump has kept, and I think it's important that he meet the faces of the aspiring Americans who work hard and pay taxes. Oscar's been working since he's 14 years old. He was in junior ROTC in high school. He wanted to join the Army. Uh, he was told by the recruiter he scored in the top few percent, and they had to turn him away because he didn't have a Social Security number. So if we want to make America not great, legally. We, need, we, we need to deploy the talents and skills of, of immigrants like Oscar. So that, you just answered my next question, which is, what is the point of all this? We're making, you know, middle America is dying, the life expectancy a lot of people is dropping, and you're spending your time elevating people who are here by definition in violation of our laws. And you're saying you're doing it because it helps us. If that's true, why don't other countries do this? Why isn't China inviting illegal immigrants to come in and make it better? Why well, isn't look, Mexico doing that? No other country is doing this except us. If it's really a good thing, why aren't they doing it? Well, I'm a fan of finding out ways to do it legally, but the truth is, when you look at important uh, industries in our economy, like agriculture, like the tourism industry, we need people here who are able to work those jobs. Oscar's been working full-time since he was 14 years old, works two jobs. He has uh, three siblings that have all been working from a young age. Uh, we need the skills and talents uh, of immigrants to, the, to make our country great. And are I you think being, we need I to mean, find a look, way to do it legally. You're a smart guy. I know that. We went to the same school, actually, so I know you're a smart guy. <laughs> you don't really believe that our agriculture industry is the reason they're here. I mean, we have more Americans unemployed than at any time since the Great Depression. There's not a labor shortage in this country. We have just the opposite of a labor shortage. We have a surfeit of Americans who have no jobs. So well, that's why we're bringing in no, low-skilled labor, because no one else will do it? Is that really your argument? Look, Oscar is a small businessman today. He's created six jobs for Americans with his own small business. A disproportionate share of entrepreneurs and founders of companies, large and small, are immigrants. So if we want to grow jobs no. here, we ought to be able to attract the best and brightest from across the world to deploy their then talents why in our country we? and create jobs. Wait, but you're making... Wait, no, hold on, Congressman. You're making two arguments that are mutually exclusive. You're saying we need to bring in a lot of people with no skills and low education to pick our fruit. Our agriculture industry needs them. And then you're saying we need it's people to come in to start new board. businesses across yep. the board. But the it's overwhelming majority the of people so who come here, but the overwhelming majority are low skilled labor. And we don't demonstrably, we don't need that. We've got I, I don't, millions I, and Tucker, millions of unemployed are you, Americans. I mean, are you, are you going to go to those fields and, and pick, those, pick those crops? I mean, I hear from the dairy industry. I hear from farmers. Right now, you, you should know this, Tucker. Not they at hire those wages. Under the table. No they American They hire people would. under the table. Um, that's what they do today because there's not respect for our laws. For our laws to have respect, we need to align them to the actual needs of the economy. Uh, the economy but, and the invisible hand are a powerful force. You can only deny them so long. We need people to support our quality of life and to support our economy. And the immigrants are an important oh, part of that. We need a surf class. So when did Democrats, liberal Democrats, find themselves on the side of employers hoping for more low-wage labor to exploit? I thought Democrats were supposed to be 
protecting those people like Cesar Chavez did. But you're I saying they I want to hire people at a lower wage and we can't get the way because the invisible hand demands it? Is that what Tucker, you're arguing? Tucker, I'm on the side of consumers and I hope you are too. I think Americans care a lot about uh, what they, uh, especially low and moderate income Americans, about the cost of milk and the cost of eggs and the cost of fruit at the grocery store, um, the cost of goods at Walmart. We could get into trade and how, how, uh, how important it is that we, don't, that we oppose President uh, Trump's uh, tariff agenda that would be regressive and raise costs on items for uh, working families. Okay. But uh, consumer... Consumers are important. Every American is a consumer. And uh -huh. uh, to have those low prices, we need to make sure that so we're my, able to my, have our well, jobs. No, filled. cheap goods are great, but let me just, last question mm -hmm. for you. Are you arguing that your average low-skilled laborer, not your friend Oscar, who sounds like a great guy, but the average low-skilled laborer is a net plus to the American economy? In other words, produces more in taxes than he consumes in services? Are you going to say that with a straight face? I can say it would be devastating to the American economy if the 11 million people that are here today, some of whom are working in low-wage jobs, were somehow to be deported or to disappear. That would be devastating. It would cost us a couple points of GDP, and it would increase our yeah. deficit. It would certainly force employers to pay more to their employees. Congressman, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you.